Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Viewers, good morning. We welcome you to this morning devotion with the Daily Fountain, the Daily Devotional of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. And today is Tuesday, November 19th. And before we commence what we have for us this morning, it is proper that we pray. And so I would want you to close your eyes so that we commit ourselves to God in prayers before we begin our meditation for today. Heavenly Father, a King of glory, we thank you for this bright day that you have created and you have given us a privilege to see a God in heaven. We want to meditate on your word this morning and for the entrance of your word brings light. We ask that you will speak to us in the language that we will understand. Lead us, Heavenly Father, that we will not go astray even as we run this Christian race. Thank you for hearing our prayers, dear Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The topic we want to consider this morning is beware of greed. Beware of greed. And the text is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 6, from verses 6 through 10. I want to read from the New King James Version of the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Beware of greed. Greed, simply put, is a selfish or excessive desire or crave for what is needed, more than what is needed and what is desired, especially of money, wealth, food, clothing, and other possessions. Greed comes when one finds it difficult to distinguish between wants and needs. Many people in our society today tend to run after their wants rather than their needs. When you begin to desire for want rather than needs, then greed sets in. Paul said, Now, godliness with contentment is great gain. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, that godliness with contentment is great gain. What is he talking about? That whatever we have, however little it may be, we should be contented with it. We should not crave for more than what is needed. We should not crave for more than what we would, what the basic things that are needed in order for us to live well at the expense of causing someone harm. We should not begin to desire more than what is needed. The little that God has given to us should be enough for us to live with. This is what Paul seems to be telling us from this particular verse of the Bible. And in Luke chapter 12, verse 15, Jesus warned his disciples sternly that they should take heed, they should beware of conventiousness, for a man's life does not consist in what he possesses, 
A man's life consists in the word of God. And whatever God has given should be enough for man to live with. And again, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus gives the cure to greed by teaching that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing that we run after, money, clothing, wealth, riches, all of them will be added to us if we seek first his kingdom and righteousness. This is what God wants us to do. Greed leads to all kinds of evil. And if you look at our society today, there are all kinds of evil taking place. We see the internet fraud, the Yahoo Yahoo boys, how they defraud people of their valuables. It is not because they are lacking money. It is because of their crave for more than what they actually need to live with. It is not because they do not have clothing. It is because they desire to have more. And when one is pushed with this spirit of greed, there is every tendency that such people will fall into temptations that are capable of swallowing them. May God never allow us to be pushed into that kind of situations in the name of Jesus Christ. There was a man, Gehazi by name, who was pushed by the spirit of greed. And because he was led by that spirit, he fell into trouble and could not fulfill his ministry as expected. We were told that the prophet Elisha was a servant of Elijah. And when Elijah was about to be taken up to heaven by God, he gave or he handed over to him the mantle of leadership and authority. One would have expected that since Gehazi was also the senior apprentice under the prophet Elisha, he would have also received that same mantle from his master Elisha. But that was not the case. It was because of greed that he missed that great opportunity. He ran after Naaman. He collected the gifts that his master Elisha had rejected. It was a result of greed. Had he been, he was contented with what he had. He wouldn't have fallen into that grievous temptation. When man refused to be satisfied with whatever God has given to him, there is a tendency that they will fall into trouble. This same Gehazi was the man that the prophet Elisha shared the same room, the same bed, the same food with when they were accommodated by the Shunanite woman. So, it is not true that he was actually lacking the basic things that he needed to live with. It is not true that he was lacking food. It is not true that he was lacking clothing. It is not true that he was lacking money. Because if he was lacking, his master Elisha would have also been in that situation of lack. And he would have received the gifts from Nehemiah. But because he was satisfied, we believe that his servant Gehazi was also, I mean, should have been in that same kind of situation of being satisfied with whatever that he had. But instead, he was not satisfied with what he had. He was driven by greed, and greed led him into trouble. That was not supposed to be his portion. But because of greed, that was his portion. May God never allow that to be our portions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God has made it so possible for man at least to have his daily bread. But when we begin to push for more, we will have troubles. Why would some people want to amass the wealth of a whole nation and continue to live when others are suffering with such wealth? Why would some people gather money that they will not be able to finish in their own lifetimes, saving and keeping it for their children that have not been given birth to, when others are languishing in poverty? It is greed. Why would some people kill their fellow human beings 
and live with their wealth. It is because of greed. Why would people want to do all sorts of evil to defraud their fellow humans, to take what belongs to them? It is because of greed. God has taught us that greed is a sin. And one sin will always lead to another. If we are led by the spirit of greed, and when we have taken what does not belong to us, all in the name of trying to make it quicker in life, and then we are also faced with the temptation of telling lies like Gehazi. When he returned from collecting the gift that his master Elisha rejected, and his master asked him, where are you coming from, my servant? He told a lie. So you see, one sin leads to another. So in order for us to avoid committing sins against our God, we should also try our best to avoid greed. To overcome greed, we must get, right, get rid of the desires to be rich at all costs. People craving to be rich can be caught in an endless cycle that only ends in ruin and destruction. There is no, nothing bad in being rich, but the means of getting rich, if it is questionable, the means of getting rich, if it is at the expense of somebody's life, the means of getting rich, if it is not genuine, then it is wrong. And God would always place such people under serious judgment. They will not end well. Look at very many people in our society today. It is not because they don't have money. It is not because they don't have clothes. They have misplaced their priorities. They do not know what is their desire, I mean, what is their want, and they do not also know what is their need. And because of this, this they crave for more, and it costs them their lives. God is trying to warn us this morning not to be like Gehazi. God is warning us this morning that we should be contented with what we have. For the excessive crave for money will always lead us into trouble. If you have little, learn to be contented with it. We must not have the whole world before we will be satisfied. Man's need are insatiable. We cannot get it all. But little by little, day by day, God is able to sustain us. If the little that we do, we do it genuinely, God will crown our little efforts with success. We will not need to begin to crave for other people's things and fall into trouble. Learn to be contented with what you have. Learn to trust a God that is able to provide. When we seek our own good at the expense of the word of God and his instructions, we will end up in trouble. And that is what God never wants us to be. And for that reason, we must be able to distinguish between our needs and our wants so that we will not be tempted by the spirit of greed. Children of God this morning, think about what happened to Gehazi when he was pushed by the spirit of greed. Anyone who seeks the kingdom of God first and his righteousness, God has promised to give to him whatever that he needs to live a very good life. And so whatever that God has given to us already, he is ready to add more if we pursue wealth with the word of God in accordance with his word and not deviating and trying to get wet by hook and crook. And because when we try to get wet by hook and crook, then we are being led by the spirit of greed. Jesus has told us that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. We should depend on the word of God even as we crave for whatever we need for our living. We should try to follow the means of making money in the ways of the Lord. 
we should not try to take shortcuts. If we take shortcuts, we will not end well. We will end like Gehazi. But if we pursue wealth in the right ways, in genuine ways, in accordance with the word of God, God is ready to bless us. Greed is sin. Our lives does not depend or consist in whatever we possess. But our lives depend on the word of God. Children of God, this morning, I am urging you, and the Lord is urging you, that we should not be greedy. Our leaders today, many of them are greedy. That is why they are taking away the wealth of the nation to develop other places. When in our own country, things are not going well. It is not because they do not have money. Some are storing up money in water tanks. Some are storing money in soccer pits. They will not live to enjoy it all. And their children yet are born may not also do well to live with whatever their parents are storing up at the expense of others. Avoid the spirit of greed and the Lord will bless you. The little that you have, be contented with it. That should be enough for you. Do not struggle. Do not desire for more at the expense of other people. God bless you richly, even as you guide yourself with this word that he has spoken to us this morning. Close your eyes and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are most grateful to you. We thank you for speaking to us this morning in this manner. We thank you for also assuring us this morning that whatever we have, if we depend on you, we will have more. That we should not crave excessively for more than we need or desire. For you are our God. You know our pains. You know what we need. And you will continue to supply. Thank you for assuring us this morning. And thank you for teaching us that we should not be greedy. May your name be praised and may your name be blessed forever. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.